the concept of a whistleblower and the idea of protecting yourself. I was reading the story of Li Wenliang. He's the, probably the most famous Chinese doctor in the early outbreak who sounded an alarm about something going on. He wasn't the first one, apparently somebody was suspicious before he reported it in near the latter part of December. But he died. He was 34 years old. So some details about him. He's an ophthalmologist. Some people may think, well, what would he know? Well, I don't know about China, but in the US, ophthalmologists are considered very intelligent. There is a few doctors who aren't in the traditional path of, quote, being a doctor. They're not a surgeon, nor are they a medical doctor, medical meaning internal medicine and its subspecialties. In the US, we actually call them brilliant. They're on the road to success as an ROAD, radiology, ophthalmology, anesthesia, dermatology. These are the brightest and the best. They work very hard to get into their respective fields. They usually do very well. They have good lifestyles. That's why many people want to go into it. But ophthalmologists, we would say, aren't stupid. Dermatologists technically aren't stupid either. So <clears throat> he says that he actually shared this information on a WeChat group. He asked other people not to share outside. He just wanted to explain his concerns and tell them that, you know, you guys better beware, thinking of how to protect yourself from this. But other people did share, and he was angry, he said initially, because they shared it and didn't hide his information. That's why they could track it. But later, he says he understood, you know, they were very worried too worried to be able to think about things like, you know, hiding his information when they're sharing information. In this interview given on the 30th of January, they had lots of questions about his punishment, this or that, you know, whether he was one of those eight, and he avoided answering most of them, and I think it really wasn't much of a point. I don't know how much he really knew back then, but his condition was poor, and he ended up passing away a week later. But he does note that he wasn't spreading a rumor when they asked him that question. He posted the test report. The report said with high confidence that this was the SARS coronavirus. So he said it wasn't a rumor because it's true. He repeatedly noted he didn't want to cause trouble. He just saw something and wanted to make sure others were aware. Others meaning other doctors. And after he recovered, he was going to go back to the front line because he didn't want to be a deserter. By the way, this virus, the novel coronavirus, is actually named sars cov 2 SARS-CoV-2. In the case of personal protective equipment, you know, you hear stories about China and how they were not prepared. They're like, oh, people got sacked in India, and you're like, oh, that's India, but guess what? All that's happened to him has happened in the U.S. as well. The U.S. hasn't been prepared. They didn't have enough equipment. But guess what? Just like Dr. Lee, you can't say anything, otherwise you'll get in trouble. Technically, it may not be the US government, but it's the hospitals who are doing this. Not all hospitals, but I'd say the vast majority of hospitals. There was Ming Lin, an ER doctor in Washington State, who was posting publicly on Facebook about how they needed more protection there was a nurse, Laura Mar Mazuk, yes, who said, you know, th you should wear more personal protective equipment, not just a simple face mask to the other nurses in the hospital administration sector. One spokesperson said for NYE Langone Health, it is in the best interests of our staff and the institution that only those with the most updated information are permitted to address these issues with the media. Now we all know that updated information doesn't mean very much, right? As in the WHO recommendations are sort of old by the time they actually come out. There's stuff that should have been done weeks ago. And basically they're saying they wanna censor the information. They wanna vet it, they say, to make sure it's accurate. Well, to basically control the information coming out. They come out with statements like this. Several hospital staff have tested positive for the virus, but these are unrelated to their work in a hospital. Well, how could you know? That was what one chief executive said at Peace Health St. Joseph in Bellingham, Washington, where Dr. Lin, the ER physician, was fired from. 
But the hostels took it a step further. They actually didn't even allow you to wear your own equipment. And 95s were awfully hard to come by. And they still are for most people. But some people happen to have them. But they weren't happy with doctors wearing it in a hospital. They said, well, you're scaring other people. Why? Well, you know, it's not fair that you have one when nobody else has it. So that means you shouldn't protect yourself? One big issue is these administrators aren't actually doctors. They don't know medicine. There are some who may have been doctors, but they don't actually work as doctors anymore. They don't work on a front line. They don't actually have any personal risk here. The only risk they have is the same risk as the people who manage big corporations whose stocks have been doing very well. A risk to their multi-million dollar paycheck. They want the people, their employees, doctors, nurses to work so they can make money. You could put in nicer ways that they don't want people to be scared, but the question is, is it right to lie to people? Are people that stupid that they will believe your lie and they don't realize that you tricked them? I think that's a difficult question to answer, and I don't have an answer to that question. I think it is better to say things that are actually correct instead of lying to, to your staff, though. But I guess the question, is there a model of being transparent so people can trust you? I think possibly there is. Not China, obviously. Not the US, obviously. But what about this little country called Singapore? We'll talk about it next time. A Singapore strategy is very different. Things are not going well in Singapore right now as your cases are rising. But maybe their strategy still is a good strategy.